Hello and welcome back. Now we're on element T4. Now the FCC and the NCVEC calls that the sub-element. I'm calling it the element and the sub-element is what I'm calling the letter A alpha. We're on T4A01. This is just a question that you sort of have to memorize um, if, if you don't have any experience with these radios. But which of the following is an appropriate power supply rating for a typical 50 watt output mobile FM transceiver? And 13.8 volts is approximately what you'll get out of your alternator of your vehicle. And they run about 12 amps. That's how much current those radios draw. So 13.8 volts at 12 amps. That's your typical 50 watt output FM transceiver. Question number two. Which of the following should be considered when selecting an accessory SWR meter? Now you can get an SWR meter for your radio and what you can do, I'm just using a handheld radio right now, but if I wanted to measure the SWR of this antenna, it's going to go in between here, the output of the radio and the input to the antenna, and I need to know the frequency that I'm going to use, which in this case, this radio is 2 meters or between 144 and 148 megahertz. And I know that this radio can output a maximum of 5 watts. So when I choose an SWR meter, I need to know those two factors. Now, if you're using an HF rig, let's say you're going to have 10 meters then you need something that can go up to about 30 megahertz, and then you need to know your power level. So your power level may be 200 watts for your 100 watt base rig. All right, let's move on to the next question. Why are short heavy gauge wires used for a transceiver's DC power connection? So you want that connection to be as short as possible because the wires have resistance. And if you have resistance, then you're going to have a voltage drop when current flows through that wire. And we will learn that later on, that there's actually a formula, Ohm's Law, that proves that. But the answer to this question is to minimize voltage drop when transmitting. You want as much of those electrons to get to that radio as you can. Now we're going to a question or questions that talk about digital operation and how are the transceiver audio input and output connected in a station configured to operate using FT8. Now I made fun of this because it is not the FT8converter.com website. That is just silly. But go there and check it out. But WSJTX is the program, the software. You will use the audio input and output of a computer. And that is how you connect it to your rig or to your station. Question five, where should an RF power meter be installed? Now, I just talked about my little HT rig. If I wanted to find out how much power I wanted to measure, it needs to go from the output of your rig to the feed line, which in this case, there's not much of a feed line. It just goes straight to the antenna. So you want it right there at the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. Number six, what signals are used in a computer radio interface for digital mode operation? You're gonna have your receive audio, your transmit audio, and transmitter key. So that's a connection. The receive audio is going to be the receive from your radio. It goes from your radio's speaker output to your computer's line in. The transmit audio is what you're going to transmit. That goes from the computer to the input of your radio. And then the transmitter keying is some way that your radio will be keyed. And there's multiple ways to do that when you get into it. It might be something like a signal link. It could be a transistor keying through a um, parallel port or a serial port. Uh, there, there's plenty of solutions for that out there.
Question 7. Which of the following connections is made between a computer and a transceiver to use computer software when operating digital modes? The computer line in to the transceiver speaker connector. Or, you know, it's really the, if you follow the flow of the signal, it really would be the transceiver speaker connector to your computer line in, but that's how they worded it on this test. So computer line in to the transceiver speaker connector. So you want what comes out of the radio to go into the line in, not, not the microphone, because the microphone may have some extra gain, which is going to distort that signal. So you want it to go to the line in. Question eight, which of the following conductors is preferred for bonding at RF or radio frequencies? The preferred way is flat copper strap with straight runs. Copper braid removed from coax cable is not a good idea. And steel wire is also not a good idea. Steel is, it's gonna become magnetic uh, if you pass current through it anyways. Twisted pair cable is just too small. There's not enough surface area. And then at RF, you have a skin effect too, so it really reduces it. That flat copper strap gives it plenty of room, uh, plenty of surface area. Question number nine, how can you determine the length of time that equipment can be powered from a battery? Now, first, you need to know what the battery ampere hour rating is. If you're using a LifePo battery, you might have a 100 amp hour LifePo life battery. And let's say that your rig uses 10 amps on average current draw. Well, that 10 amps, you divide the 100 amperes of the battery by the 10 amps that your receiver draws in equipment and you're going to look at around 10 hours of operating time. So you're going to divide the battery ampere hour rating by the average current draw of the equipment. It's a very easy and simple formula. We have a couple questions left. Number 10, what function is performed with a transceiver in a digital mode hotspot? communication using digital voice or data systems via the internet. Now, the way to remember the question for this is hotspot. If you think of, you know, using your phone for your internet hotspot, you're using internet. That's the easiest way to remember the answer, but you will use the internet and whatever device you're using is gonna convert your voice into digital to be transmitted over the internet to the receiver on the other end. Question number 11, where should the negative power return of a mobile transceiver be connected in a vehicle? This one's new to me. Uh, I may have to try this out later. I have mine at the actual 12 volt battery negative. But this says, and these are proper operating procedures, this is at the 12 volt battery chassis ground. So it's where your 12 volt battery, if you go look at it, the negative is bonded to the body somewhere in the engine compartment. Um, if, if your battery is in fact in the engine compartment, some batteries are in the trunk. Uh, so that's where you want to ground it is at the chassis ground not at and, and of course the the negative is not even one of the answer choices here t4a12 and the last question for this section is what is an electronic keyer and that is a device that assists in manual sending of morse code now on your radio this may be built in most modern rigs have an electronic keyer and you connect what's called paddles to that electronic keyer, and you may have the left as a dot and the right as a dash, and if you hold it, it automatically sends the dots. And so however long you hold it and whatever speed you have it at determines how many dits or dots for doing CW or Morse code, um, it will automatically 
send those for you. Alrighty, so this is T4 sub element A, and I hope you come back for sub element B next, and we'll have a great time learning the technician exam. Hey, thank you so much. I'm Robbie W1RCP73.